if Deku was Black Noir Part 2. Now, uh, basically, some guys or some people asked me, you know, in Part 1. I did state it in Part 1, but anyway, some people asked me in Part 1 that didn't comment. That were just my friends that watch my videos. They said, you know, God, bro, I'm like, is he an anti-hero? Or like, he's an anti-hero. He ain't no, he's not a straight up villain. He actually is going to be an anti-hero. Uh, slash hero, anti-hero. And basically, put it simple. Deku is going to be like, oh, it's going to be a lot of, you know, stories. And it's going to be a big, major, uh, you know, pretty much cliffhanger at the end of this series. Or at the end of this episode. Then episode that's going to come out is going to be uh, somewhat of a conclimate or like a uh, more rise into the story. Part maybe five or six is going to be like a big finale for, you know, this version of Deku. But yeah. So after this, I am going to be posting a lot more what is on like Young Justice, uh, uh, pretty much uh, ReZero. Like, I'm going to be uploading a lot more what ifs on other animes. And also, I am going to be doing my first Naruto what if next month. So that's going to be one. Like, what if Naruto. I might do a what if Naruto had Daredevil's powers, or I might do what if Naruto was a speedster. But enough of that. So let's just dive right into this what if and let's get started. I will start a story last time when we left off where Deku goes back to his penthouse that Bot has for him after he does the whole, you know, combat training with Bakugo and everybody else. Yeah. So, Deku goes to UA the next day of school or the third day of school as he walks into Class 1A and sits down. As Class 1A is, you know, doing their thing, basically, majority of the day going exactly the same. And sorry if the audio is down a little bit, I did do a time gap on this video. So yeah, so basically, pretty much doing this, Deku would have gotten ready, and basically the class wouldn't gotten ready as they would be told by Azawa that they were going to the USJ to do combat training and field training with 13. As they would have arrived there, the meeting up with 13 on the way there, the students would still talk about their quirks, but Deku wouldn't talk at all, and he would just see sitting in the front of the bus. Now, when they got on to, you know, the USJ, they'll be sitting there basically just minding their own business until Deku sent something wrong. For some reason, you know, main, you know, anime protagonist senses or vibe, he would, well, think something was going on. He would feel it in his gut. As he would look around, as in out of nowhere, a villain would have popped out of nowhere trying to stab or cut towards Deku and also a couple other students, as it would be Shadow's multiple portals opening up around them instead of just one big portal next to them so they would start to have to fight for themselves and Zao would tell 13 to escort the children out of the way or escort the students out of the building as 13 would have escorted them out of the building eventually 13 would get bodied by Kirigiri I think that's what his name is the shadow court guy and he would get absolute she would get absolutely slumped so she was she was out for the count as everybody else or half of the other students would be teleported away, Deku teleporting over top of the water combat area where Froppy Mineta would be. As Deku would start to fall onto the ground and I will be switching back and forth with the name Black Noir or Deku for the, for the entire or the rest of the fanfic. So basically Deku would have fell down as he would have dove into the water as villains would start to rush towards him as Deku would have took out two daggers and started to slice and dice and pretty much just open up and gut multiple of the villains eventually 30 to 40 minutes going by as Froppy Mineta would have seen the blood or seen the pretty much water around them turn completely red as majority of all the villains would have been you know taken out but some of them about five of them would be visually sliced in two and basically ripped apart superhuman shrink style as Deku would mainly take apart some of them as he would you know slice their necks or basically cut them in a certain part of their brain that would immobilize them turning them into a vegetable but still being able to keep them alive as Deku wouldn't kill all of them but would pit most of them in critical condition it seeming like they're dead so Deku would have taken down a lot of people as Deku would have gotten out of the water on the shore area as he would have told Froppy and Mineta that it was safe as he would have gestured she, he, he would have gestured it towards them as he would you know pretty much hand gestured them to come towards him as he would have dove into the water as they would swim on the other shore as they would have meet up with Deku as Deku would have been gone at the by the time they get to the shore as Deku would be sprinting towards the Nomu and All Might attack 
as All Might and Anomi would be fighting, throwing hands, just going ham on each other. As Deku would eventually get in between the mix and would have thrown a specific unique dagger into the Nomu's chest, pushing All Might back and jumping down into the floor, taking cover. As it would be a well, a dagger infused with some sort of very, very like high tech, pretty much C4 in the handle, as it would blow up immediately in the Nomu. As Deku would use his super strength to drive the dagger in the Nomu's chest completely. Pretty much the handle being inside the Nomu's ribs. As the Nomu would have been blown up from the chest up, as the Nomu's whole chest would be gone. As it would slowly start to regenerate, as All Might would get up, taking this time to land a finishing blow, taking out the Nomu immediately, bursting the Nomu into smithereens. As Deku would get back up, as Deku would look around, everybody would get ready and basically walk off. Most of this majority of people would have still been injured. So it would have been was still been injured and you know the students and multiple of you know people from UA would have been called off and UA would have been shut down for a couple days. For those couple days Deck would be in bots you know whole penthouse he was at as he would be training there as he would eventually look at some files someone left behind. As Deck would go to Vot Tower basically being interested because he would be going online basically doing stuff like that as he would get a message from somebody from a bot saying that he knew the truth about his parents. As Deku would be very much confused and overall distraught about this as he would just turn off the you know message not really caring for it too much as he would just look away. As Deku would eventually get interested and he would go back on you know pretty much the web talking to this person for hours a day as they would have about like a week off from UA as Deku would spend about five days talking to this dude. As Deku would eventually figure out that the guy had some sort of rumors going around that somebody on the 7 killed his parents. As he would be told by, you know, pretty much, well, the guy on the camera, not the camera, but the guy on the internet, as, you know, it is a file saying who and how exactly the member of the 7 killed your parents. And who killed your parents. And basically saying that the file is in Watt, Watt Tower right now and is being moved the station the station the area to area and it's in Vought Tower the Vought Tower stationed in Japan as Deku was about two miles away from Vought Tower the Vought Tower that's stationed in Japan as Deku would get ready and basically put on a type of stealth suit pretty much putting on a copy of his UA hero costume his black noir suit as Deku would go down there as Deku would pretty much sneak into the building being undetected since well his main you know, pretty much the way he was trained was, well, stealth, as he would be the most undetectable person in the My Hero universe. Even more stealthy than somebody that had an invisibility quirk. As Deku would be sneaking in and out of all the crevices, the crevices, or the crevices, I don't really know how to pronounce it, parole, but basically he would just be going around Bot Tower, eventually getting on the top floor. As he would see that it was a member of the Seven there, AKA this universe's version of the deep. This universe's version of the deep would have had the same power set as in talking to fish and being able to breathe in the water, but he would also have superhuman strength and durability. He would also have the ability to pretty much, well, control water like a waterbender, but not as, you know, strong as a waterbender. Kind of like a, I guess, kind of like how Aqualad can make weapons out of water. This version of deep can do that. Just on a weaker scale so he can make water daggers or a water trident for only a certain amount of minutes though so Deku would have just passed by this version of deep with no problem him just using a, this version of deep just doing a photo shoot as Deku would get into the files of Vought Tower as it would be stationed there because Vought, Vought Tower is you know pretty much files since they're so well uh, straight up the highest priority Every time some some sort of soup that isn't on the seven as like a bodyguard soup, a bodyguard soup soup would have been there pretty much guarding the files as it would be stationed or moved to Vot Tower, the Vot Tower every single month to keep it you know pretty much fluent. As this would be the last you know couple of days before it would be stationed somewhere else, maybe in Japan, maybe in China, can Canada or somewhere else. As that would go into this building as he would look around as he would grab a file that was stationed to him the death of his parents as that would open up the folder and basically sorry i don't know how, why i pronounced that but the folder as he would have looked into it as he would see 
something that his eyes wouldn't believe as he would look closer and closer as so i'm gonna leave it off here guys so i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys like and subscribe and in part three we will be introduced how deku found out his parents died and how he would deal with who killed his parents and how it would happen and how all this would go down and how he would go against the system of uh, the vice making for soups now hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you like and subscribe and as also uh click the was it, notification button and also guys i don't you probably wondering why am i you know like it's really low and i'm not really talking too loud that's because i'm at my my mom's job right now and i'm like in the closet because like i'm really just trying not to get heard because i'm trying to get this video out pretty fast but yeah so i can enjoy the video because like and subscribe and it's also guys have a blessed day Thank you.